Okay. I guess we need to talk about claymores a little bit more, don't we? Right, I've tidied up the neck beard, all right? You can't complain anymore. I'll be honest, I think most of you had missed the point. It was a quarantine beard. I'm not growing this because I want to. I'm growing this because I'm being lazy. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and in today's video, we are going to be discussing claymores in a little bit more depth than last time. We're going to cover a few more things. Uh, sadly, I ran out of time at the end of the last video, and I wanted to put another one together to sort of showcase a few more ways that you can utilize this secondary gadget. So if you haven't seen the first video, the link's going to be down in the description below. If you have, sit back, relax, and let's chat a little bit more about these secondary gadgets. So the first thing we kind of need to cover with claymores is the fact that they are sketchy. They are inconsistent at best, and that's kind of the problem with them. You will use a claymore 300 times, and it will get a kill 90% of those. And then the next 10%, it doesn't get a kill because it blows up but doesn't work. Sometimes that impact can be soaked up by the wall. Sometimes it just doesn't affect the person, and they are just inconsistent. So because of that, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. Now... Would I advise slapping a claymore down and using that to cover your flank? Definitely not. And the problem with it being so inconsistent is that you can't rely on it. You can't rely on the fact that the defender doesn't know a way around it or that it can't be shot out because every single claymore that you can put down, I'm guaranteeing you now there's a way around it. There's a way to remove it, whether it's a impact grenade or whether you can shoot it a certain way, whether you can get a different angle onto it or whether you can crawl under it, as we're going to look at in a minute. There are loads of ways around it. There really are. So don't rely on claymores. It does not replace the job of the person that should be flank watching. Someone should stay there and cover those stairs or, you know, cover that run out for the person that's on the window. There's ways around it. Nevertheless, following the last video, I did get a few comments and a few people said, you know, that one doesn't work because of this or because of that. We're going to go ahead and look at why you may be right or wrong, uh, depending on what the comment was but hopefully we can break down a few more ways to utilize claymores. So we're over on the YouTube page and this dude has basically come at me and said, I dislike the video because the first claymore placement he's on about are shite placements because a defender, as a defender, it's actually possible to get around it without shooting it out. The claymore has been placed too far back. So we're going to go ahead and look at exactly that. So in my last video, I was told that this was a bad claymore because people could sneak past it. And let's have a look at this. If the laser is placed correctly, it comes up to, you can still see it here. So it comes up all the way to there. Now, I understand people's point. You look like you can sneak past that, but if you try, it doesn't actually work, as you will have seen just there. Now, I was, I was hugging this wall as close as I possibly could. I can't move any closer to it. So yes, you're right in what you say. If you place the lasers or you place the claymore too far back, it won't actually reach the far side of the door. But you've got to make sure that it goes far enough. So this is exactly my point that I was talking about. By taking a few extra seconds to double check your laser and that your claymore is in a good spot, you can actually make it pretty beneficial. Is the claymore perfect? No, it's far from it. I mean, at the end of the day, people could genuinely crawl out underneath this claymore, although by the time they get past it, they are actually detected. So yeah, it's not a perfect claymore and I'm not suggesting it is. The whole point of the last video was to say to people, you've got to be careful of the claymores that you're using and actually double check the way you've set them up. That's kind of what I was trying to iterate there. Now, one thing about this um, crawling out, yes, it takes a long time. Yes, you'll get detected by the time you've actually stood up. Um, don't try and crawl outside sideways if you're going to try this to see if you can shoot the claymore you will just blow up because your legs are flailing around everywhere in the door frame a better way to deal with it is pretty much just run out and shoot as you're running just pre-fire it there is a split second before it goes off and this can allow you all the time you need to take it out you do then have to do a 180 to flip round to actually take out the person on the window with this one you do need to know where the claymore is and it is a bit high risk high reward because if you miss you're dead there are however countless other ways to get past claymores um, even if they're really well placed like this one just here. I mean, this is a bad example, but it will showcase another way to get past it. Oryx um, with his Remar dash is an absolute beast and Claymores just don't stop him. They don't stand a chance because of that slight delay. He's going to get past them. Even as we see here, all three lasers, big open area. They should definitely take me out if I was to run through that as like a three speed op. But as I say, Oryx is Remar dash. He's going to make it through to the other side. And not only is he going to make it to the other side, he's going to do it with full health. It just hasn't affected or touched him at all. 
Other ops that may not be able to get past claymores but can actually soak them would be Clash. Clash is very, very effective at dealing with claymores, as we'll see here. And if you are an attacker, sometimes this can actually kill you being on the other side of it. So don't try and cover doorways that Clash is playing in because that could come back to bite you. When it comes to windows, Clash can actually jump out of windows. And if she crouches before the claymore goes off, she takes a lot less damage and she can actually soak that just by putting the shield on her back and facing the opposite way. I'll go ahead and showcase this a different way so you can actually see it happening. I'm going to put the claymore down. And if you crouch before you vault out, she will do the vault animation and then instantly go into the crouch for you. So you don't have to worry about it by facing the opposite way to the claymore. If you know which side it's on, your shield is going to take the brunt of that. This can be extremely effective for various different runouts. Um, if someone's playing up on the sandwich window on order lockers, for example, uh, placing a claymore down just outside of vents to try and cover that window, it's going to cause people to have to look the opposite way and shoot the claymore, which gives you ample time to turn and shoot them. However, Clash doesn't need to do that. She can just soak the, uh, the claymore itself into her back and she can be looking at you straight away without any fear at all. So this next comment we got said, how can you not include single beam claymore for doors? Or are you saving it for the next video? The single beam claymores for doors can actually be a little bit tricky to try and get a perfect claymore laser. So my logic behind not covering that is it can not only be difficult to get, but it can also actually soak up a lot of the damage of the claymore into the wall that it's next to because you're facing it so far round. It just makes it a little bit more inconsistent. So I don't really utilize that. Next up, we had this one. It said, I found a lot of success facing the claymore towards and up against the barricade. Uh, it helps when an aggressive roamer just rips down the barricade to run out uh, and then they get instantly destroyed. So this is what they were discussing. Go ahead and place the claymore down facing the door. This can be extremely effective, certainly on the strip club run out because for some reason the ground is slightly lower. And as you'll see, the lasers actually just dip underneath this doorway. Uh, it also happens on cafe by the construction run out. And if we go and get the defender to come close to this door, you'll see that it actually puts him down without him even opening the door. So this can be effective at times. His feet somehow touch it. I don't know. It doesn't work on all doors. Normally, it just goes up against the door and stops on the bottom beam. But nevertheless, this is why I don't really use this. There are so many ways around it. As a defender, if the claymore is slightly too far back, then the defender opens the door even if those lasers were touching him, it doesn't actually do a massive amount. As you'll see here, this actually just goes in between Jaeger's legs. And it's not until he does a full turn into it that it actually takes him out. It gives him so much opportunity to, to just shoot the claymore. He could have done so much, he would have easily seen it. And it just is a little bit ineffective. To go ahead and just sort of showcase this isn't a fluke. We tried it with a few different operators as well, Bandit. So the only way to get around this would be to place the claymore really close to the door, in which case it stands out and people can see it and they can shoot it out from below. That's not the only reason that I don't use this though. There are a few others which we're going to go ahead and take a look at. We're going to go on to the east run out on border. This is a pretty common run out. And when I do try and run out here, I try and do the one punch vault like this. And I will have seen that claymore that was just there, which gives me ample opportunity to just shoot it out before I go running out. Now, I'm not saying this is ineffective at all. You will definitely get people doing this. Um, and there are, you know, several ways that you can use this. I personally have been caught out by someone with impact grenades using like this many times. So I've just stopped using it now unless I absolutely have to. As you will have seen there, Vigil's impact grenade when it hit the door actually blew up the claymore and the claymore was pretty far away. Instead, what I like to try and do is bring the claymore further round here and account for the run out when it's further out and that person is committed to trying to see people. As you will see, Vinny is helping me out here. He's just placed the claymore down and the lasers are in such a light area that I cannot actually see them at all. It makes it really difficult to spot them. So as and when the vigil decides to go running out, he's going to be focused on where people are because he's already seen that this area is clear of claymores only to find out that actually when he gets to about here, he's going to see the lasers at the very last second and it's going to be too late for him. This is a much better sort of setup and it's something you should maybe try and consider when using the claymore that you suggested, the one that's facing the door. Is there somewhere a bit further out that's going to be in the, the path of the defender that as he's running out, he's going to break? That's quite well hidden. That's nice and bright. 
that can be another way to use claim wars so give it a go have a think about it see if there's anywhere else that you would normally place it against the door that you could maybe move it further back next we're going to go ahead and take a look at oryx this is the dude that can jump up hatches and very often you will see people go ahead and slap the claim wall down like this to cover the hatch now oryx isn't picked anywhere near as much as i was expecting him to be certainly not in ranked i think on bank he could be pretty viable with all these hatches here but this is one of the biggest issues the claymores to defend against oryx and stop him from coming up by placing it above there he's going to see it and he's able to just go ahead and shoot it out with his bailiff because it is a soft floor as oryx is pretty likely you're either going to have the mp5 and the bailiff or the shotgun and the pistol so you're always going to have that utility, but by moving the claymores further back, it can actually catch the Oryx out a little bit. With a hatch like this, there's only one way that he can actually come up. He can jump up onto, I think, two of the sides and have a look around. But this is one of those, and this is the only side that he can actually climb up onto. So one thing I have been doing is moving the claymore a lot further back so that the lasers are only just showing. Now, Vinny set this one up and it was a little bit too far back, but nevertheless, it still works. Oryx isn't going to die from this. This, as you can see, is not touching him. However, he can't come up this hatch because if he does, he then breaks into the laser. So this still denies that rotate and can be pretty useful, kind of like hearing a Nomad air jab. Further to that, it can be pretty difficult for the Oryx to actually try and find the laser or find the claymore because you can't trace how far back it goes. This sort of claim will work much more like a nomad, as I say. It makes it difficult and, you know, the defender could know it's there. But to be able to get past it, you have to shotgun open potentially a lot more of the floor. And on top of that, if Oryx is trying to do a late roam, this could definitely slow him down and facilitate you in planting. Next, we're going to take a look at stairs. This claim wall right here at the top of border stairs is a pretty common one. And as you'll see, the laser goes pretty much all the way to the wall. There's no sneaking past this, just in case I get comments saying I could. But it's going to be very, very difficult to shoot it out because the section of half wall just to my left there with the X's on, that is not destructible. You can't shoot this out. So I'm, I'm reluctant to go any further to the right. However, what I can do is move up to the wall and vault over it. So if you weren't aware of this, on pretty much every set of stairs, you can vault over the railings or the banister. So that's why a lot of pro players use a claymore just here. To explain this a little bit better, we're going to go ahead and look at the graphic. And they put one laser across the top to stop anyone from moving up there. And one laser just to the side to stop anyone from coming up there. Now that seems like a lot of utility, but that's one whole way that you don't need to worry about as an attacker. You can literally just turn your back to this side of the map and not worry about anyone coming up from there. As even if they do get to the top, they can't shoot this out at all. One thing they can do, however, is they can go down below and actually look up through the roof. Similar to how Oryx could do it, um, the roof just above here is actually soft, so you can shoot sections of this out. It's going to make a lot of noise. It's going to let everyone know that you're there, but you can just take out the claymore from below. Further to this, a good way to keep people guessing is to throw an impact grenade up, which is going to take the claymore out. And by opening the floor or the roof for you, you can actually then look up through there to take on any attackers that are at the top. They're expecting to see you at the bottom of the stairs when you're not actually there. This same tip can also apply to walls as well. If you're having a hard time getting to a specific claymore, you can't quite see it. You can pretty much just crouch pre-fire the entire wall in a long line and just shoot through that soft destruction to take the claymore out, facilitating your entry into a room. But there are a million and one different ways you can utilize these claymores. Um, you just have to try and think about the, the ways that defenders are going to potentially try and get around them and then obviously figure out a way to counter that as an attacker. Um, as I've said before, Siege is like chess. It's, it's all about mind games and trying to figure out what people will spot, what mindset they're going to be in. Are they going to be midway through running out by the time they see the claymore, things like that. It's all stuff that you can take away and incorporate into your own game. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you didn't hit the dislike button, let me know why down in the comments below. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe for all things Rainbow Six. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay reckless and relentless.